Rotary Spin Golfers, welcome back to this week's tour video. I'm Master Certified Instructor Chris Tyler, checking in with Hudson Swafford, who just claimed another victory at the American Express Championship this past weekend. And if you've ever wondered why you or so many other golfers battle with posture-related issues in your downswing, then pay close attention to today's video because I'm going to highlight one of the key moves in Hudson's golf swing that allows him to maintain posture down through the point of contact and allows him to put his max speed point where it matters the most, and that is the bottom of the swing arc. Let's go ahead and get started now. Okay, so before we get started today, and for those armchair quarterbacks at home that are scouring the YouTube world and looking for information on other people's golf swings, I will say this is a big caveat. The information that I'm going to give today is not something new or something cutting edge, but it's a very important part of the golf swing, really. It's a part of the golf swing that if you focus on doing it right, then you overcome some major faults that have this sort of major trickle-down effect. So one of the things that you probably have heard us at Rotary Swing preach for many, many years is the push versus pull method, right? We talk about pulling and how important it is to be able to pull, pull, pull because everything moves towards center. But if you think about the golf swing and when we load our golf swing up, we want to be able to get things moving really, really quickly with our lower half. And so it's okay to use your right leg to push in the golf swing. It really is. Okay. It's not one of those things that it's taboo to push. We just don't want it to cause faults. So it's how you use your trail leg and your trail hip in your golf swing to help motor your downswing, but also coupling it with what you're doing with your lead side is super, super key for you being able to maintain your posture. So if you look at this from a face on perspective, what you're gonna notice is Hudson loads into his right hip beautifully. He's got really good stability. He's turning his body nice and wide. And what you'll notice is, is he starts driving off of his right leg over towards his left. So there he started the downward movement by pushing from his right side. Now, as he starts pushing from that right side, the lead side of the body starts to wake up. He starts to externally rotate that lead leg. So that lead thigh starts to externally rotate in the direction of the target. For those of you at home that are uh, biomechanists or for those of you that understand the anatomy, then this would obviously be called internal femur rotation. And so from here, he's still continuing to work on driving from that right side to the left. But now the force of movement switches mostly over to what he's doing with his lead hip and his lead leg. So if you look at it, the lead hip pulls up and away. If you look at that pocket, it's moving up and away from where the golf ball is. But now look down at his right foot. Right foot is down on the floor at contact. Now watch how long it stays down on the floor. His hands have now exited the hitting area. Now I want you to think of the hitting area as being anything below the belt line, right? So when the hands are entering in just outside the, the trail thigh and they're leaving just outside the lead thigh here, his right foot is rolled to the instep and it is still down on the floor. Why is this important? Well, because if he continues to drive up off of his right foot too early, then he's gonna start manipulating his posture. Now, looking at this from a down the line perspective, you can notice that, again, the same sort of characteristic, loading into that right hip beautifully, starts driving off of that right side over towards the left. And if you look at these few frames down through impact, his right foot is solid down to the floor. Look at how long he maintains his spine angle. Now, most golfers you're gonna see are moving in a vertical sense at this point. They're actually moving vertically before their hands and arms start getting down to contact. Why? Well, because they're allowing their weight to drive up onto the toes. They're bringing their hips forward, which in turn is affecting your spine angle. That right there is a good way for you to start throwing the club too soon. And so it has this sort of negative trickle down effect that you've heard us talk about so much before. So a great thing for you to work on is using your right leg properly, but then using it as a break. And we have a video on the website that is absolutely fantastic for that. And in fact, later in this week, I'm gonna be showcasing a video where I'm gonna be performing the movement myself. And I'm gonna walk you through a practice program that's gonna help you and teach you how to use your right leg, your right hip, as a way to start your downswing, but it's also gonna be a way to teach you how to get on the brakes so that you can maintain posture and you can slow the hips down and you can release the club at the proper time. Okay guys, I wanna thank you very much for sticking around to today's, or sticking around for today's video in its entirety. I know it wasn't a whole lot to devour, but um, in these tour videos, we like to just highlight one of the key moves in, in each of the player's golf swings. And Hudson does this move very, very well where he motors his downswing from his right leg and his right hip. So I do appreciate you guys sticking around. 
Um, for those of you that are new to the channel, please remember to subscribe to the channel so you get notifications anytime we release any new video content. You'll get notification when I do release the video of me showing you how to use your right leg and your right foot in the downward half and showing you some simple drills that you can do. Um, also remember to click the like button. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post those up. And for those of you that haven't got to experience the dead drill, the first three simple steps of the dead drill and the importance of these movements, if you'd like to see those, then click the link in the description below. That'll take you over to our website where you can start watching the content that has really revolutionized the game of golf. And uh, you might be surprised on how easy some of these moves are and how you can get it working for yourself so that you can get out there and play efficient and pain-free golf this year in 2022. Have a great day.